Greetings to you friends and brethren around the world. The title of this video, Jesus is Pro-Life. Jesus, as the God of the Old Testament, set before man the following in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. He said, Today I am giving you a choice of two ways, and I ask heaven and earth to be a witness of your choice. You can choose life or death. The first choice will bring a blessing, the other choice will bring a curse. So choose life, then you and your children will live. The Christian world is obsessed with this Jesus, or a Jesus. I mean, don't get me wrong when I say that, because there are signs Jesus is coming. Give your heart to the Lord, or the King is coming. Many ministers preach Jesus is the exclusive way to heaven. But I do, without apology, embrace the most foundational belief of historic Christianity, and that is that faith alone in Jesus Christ is the exclusive way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. However, there are many little signs of Jesus loves you, and these are found outside homes all around the world. So let me ask you a question. Do you know the Jesus who is coming back to this earth? The one you are supposed to love? I mean, do you really know Him? Do you know what He looks like? What His mission was for coming to this earth in the first place? And remember, you are told you must love Him and give your heart to the Lord. I ask, how can you when you don't, when you don't know Him, when your ministers don't even know Him? So you say, well, I'm encouraged to love Jesus. But what does that love mean to you? Have you been told what you must do to show your love to Jesus? Well, Jesus said the following. Do you believe him? In John 14, 15, he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. So if you love Jesus and you give your heart to him, do you keep his commandments, which means obey him? Well, you might say, what do you mean obey him? My ministers preached that Jesus nailed that law, those commandments, to the cross. He fulfilled the law on my behalf. It's all about love now. Okay, let's read what Jesus said about you loving him and that law in Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. That's the Old Testament. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Verse 18, For truly I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, that's the entire universe, one jot or one little tittle shall in no ways pass from the Lord till all be fulfilled. Verse 19, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Being least in the kingdom means you will not be there. Jesus went on to say in verses 21 and 22, You have heard that it was said by them of old time, You shall not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, You fool, shall be in danger of our fire. You shall not kill is a direct quote from the law, the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20:13. You shall not kill. No exception. This is the law which the professing religious Christian world says Jesus nailed to the cross or some other nonsensical excuse to allow for the murder even of the unborn and for all the immoral, gross immorality that permeates society today. You know, the Apostle Paul, Paul taught the Church of God in Rome to avoid certain things. Notice Romans 1.18 for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And what is righteousness? King David wrote in Psalm 119, 172, My tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. Yes, 
God's law is righteousness. And to disobey that law is sin. It is holding the law in unrighteousness. So says John in 1 John 3 and verse 4. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Now let me read that in plain English to those who hate God's law. It is anyone who sins breaks God's law. Yes, sinning is the same as living against law. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So it is obvious the professing religious world are telling lies about who and what Jesus the Christ is. They don't tell you that he came with a message about the new covenant. That covenant is about the glorious birth, being reborn into the family of God as a literal immortal daughter or son of the living God. Paul continues writing to the Roman Church of God. Now, that's not the Catholics, as they would like you to believe, but the Ecclesia, or the Church, the called out ones, the Church of God. Notice verse 22. They say they were wise, but they became fools. Verses 24, 25. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creation more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Yes, this civilization accepts immoral living standards. It accepts alternative lifestyles which really are influenced from Satan. Go read Ephesians 2, 1 to 2. Because of this, this sick society, the unborn, is looked upon as just so much unwanted and inconvenient flesh to be gotten rid of. Don't you wonder why so much hate toward the unborn? Why this choice? Well, it is because of the God of this world, Satan. He knows the transcendental potential that is offered to the unborn. You and all of humanity by the real Jesus through the new covenant, which is the message of the true gospel. If that message was understood by the professing Christian ministry and taught, this world would be a much better place to live in. However, for man to understand the true gospel, God's Holy Spirit has to be injected into a human mind, a mind which has surrendered and yielded completely to the will of God in belief and obedience. The human spirit in mortal man makes possible a direct contact from the great spirit God. It can be united with God so that man may be begotten of God by God's spirit. That is the Holy Spirit uniting with the human spirit. Thus impregnating the human person as a child of the supreme creator God. Therefore the real value of human life lies solely within the human spirit combined with the human brain. Now let me tell you at once, you that this human spirit is not perceived by the most highly educated psychologists nor the clergy, yet it is the very essence of the human mind. So let me explain once again upon a genuine repentance, which means you turn away from a life of disobedience to God and you accept the covering blood of Jesus Christ. Then and only then are your past sins forgiven. As Paul wrote in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, For all have sinned and become short of the glory of God. Verse 25, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation and atoning through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Yes, you have to believe the shed blood of Christ will cover your past sins. You have to accept Jesus as Savior, as Lord, and as Master as well, as soon coming King, and obey Him. Hebrews 9 verse 14, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, 
purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Yes, the human spirit needs purging. You need to understand the human spirit enters the human embryo at conception. It is this spirit that may upon adult conversion, which results from repentance of sin. In other words, you must see yourself as God sees you, the carnal person that you are. Paul wrote to the church of God in Romans 8 and verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity, hostile against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. When you see your hostility towards God and His law, then you can come to a genuine repentance and request baptism. Baptism symbolizes your willingness to die in a watery grave and then be united with the Holy Spirit from the great Creator God. The Holy Spirit impregnates that human with God life as a child of the living God in a state of gestation which is the same as the period of developing inside the mother's womb between conception and birth. To destroy an embryo or a fetus in the mother's uterus is to murder a potential future God being. Therefore, abortion is murder. Therefore, the real value of human life lies in the human spirit in man, which makes possible the union with the Holy Spirit and mind and immortality of God. So when a human dies, the body reverts to dust, as we understand from Genesis 3.19, the latter half. For out of dust, out of it, was you taken, for dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. And the Spirit returns to God. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Please go view our video, videos, Mortal Man and the Immortal Soul, the Spirit in Man, and you'll come to understand about the Spirit in Man and life after death. We will continue this subject on abortion in our next video. So this is Michael Venish for the 21st century work of Jesus the Christ. Saying goodbye friends and goodbye brethren.